Well, I'm uh, sitting outside the Land Rover at the moment. You can see that in the uh, on the other side there. And uh, yeah, basically, we start sort of like six o'clock in the morning. It's uh, one of those commercial vehicle things that yeah, we're twenty four seven. Land Rover, uh, they uh, open at 8 o'clock. Storesmen don't usually get their shit together until about 10 o'clock. And I've got to pick some bits up and uh, get on with this uh, Defender. Yeah. The one thing with uh, Land Rover, they're short technicians. And I'm sort of half thinking about going and work for them. Um, my age now, I just want something a bit lighter, but I'm not sure it's actually the best thing. Um, they're uh, £26,000 a year in this region. Um, that's per annum, and uh, they're actually starting to do six to uh, six to two and uh, two to ten shifts now, which is uh, quite handy for me. I, I like an early shift. Um, yeah, they've. Uh, if you have a look, I'll show you. There's uh, still defenders on the forecourt, and uh, I, knew, <laughs> I went and asked about buying one of those, getting some finance on a defender, but it's not realistic. So there, there you see it, Hunter's Land Rover. Well, it used to be Hunter's Land Rover, not so much now. Well, I think I might go in and ask about uh, employment, just just for crack, if nothing else. Uh, you know, you never know, I might be able to up my wages a bit and <laughs> get less, work, less working time. Anyway, they told me to get lost. Well, not really. So, job I was doing, I've had to do a write-up, quite a bit of work on this vehicle, including a 48,000 mile service. I had a diff uh, pinion leak, so the pinion's been changed along with the flange, which was scored. Uh, oil change, there's a little bit of diesel dripping on there. That was when I uh, bled the uh, diesel filter up. I'll have to show you how to do that one day. Uh, road test, make sure that the brakes are not leaking anywhere because the caliper had been off. And of course, bushes and the such like. So she's in fairly good condition now. It was roadworthy anyway, except for the fact it came in with a, a screwed wheel bearing and loads of DTCs. However, this is just the nature of the beast. This is what we do. So the old girl, she's um, yeah, she had quite a bit of money spent on her already. And of course, I had a new headlight as well. So what I did, remember if you've seen the other videos, ABS tone sensor rear right uh, had an issue. Now I've also replaced the sensor because it was worn out because it had been rubbing on the uh, uh, exciter ring. So what I'm gonna do, I've uh, set it, but I just need to make sure um, that the mill light don't, doesn't come on and it is actually working properly and the rest are working okay. So I can uh, then sign that off. This Ethos Tech is uh, pretty good for monitoring uh, the vehicle systems and the newer the vehicle, the more monitoring you can actually do. And this is uh, less uh, time uh, messing about, more time actually getting real time uh, information. So I can go into the specific ECU, which is the ABS ECU and go and have a look at the data and what it's generating. So first of all, I'll just quickly show you what data it has, and I found something interesting in here. Um, brake fluid uh, pressure, yeah? And this will be the uh, ABS modulator register in this. So uh, I put my foot down, and you can see measured in KPA, the, uh, the pressure that I'm gen generating, um, full pressure is 5,061 KPA, which is uh, quite respectable. Okay, this uh, data graphs as well. Right, so I'm going to go actually into all of the PIDs which it has, which is ECU generated information, and I'm going to get the uh, speed sensor input circuit um, voltages, okay, or should I get the speed miles per hour? It doesn't make any difference. I think I'll do what I'll do is uh, um, speed MPH because that's good enough to uh, uh, for what I'm doing. As long as I know it's working okay, it's not an issue, okay? So I'll select all four of them and then go back into the graphing mode to uh, to monitor. Now, my fingers don't seem to work very well on this touchscreen, so I use a toggle um, button, okay? And then I can go into this part of the data. So what I need to do then is uh, run the vehicle. I'll start it up and then run it and then move, okay? So I'm just driving in the yard, I'm not on the road, okay? I only need to do this uh, um, for a slow speed and what you'll see is voltage generated and then the speed will register. Okay, I'll go in a straight line and then I'll do a turn, okay? And you'll see some are working slightly different than others and I'll go straight again. 
And basically, um, this is showing the uh, speed that I'm doing, which is not much at all, which is about 10 miles an hour maximum in the, the, the yard. Okay, so all four of those sensors are working. They're giving me a, a speed reading, okay, which seem to be fairly uh, consistent. One common mistake is to uh, set the ABS sensor, then move the hub while you're fitting or removing and fitting bearings again, and then it knocks it out, and it's not close enough to the uh, exciter ring to be able to read a strong signal, so this is why I check it after I finish the job. The pulse sensors are exactly the same as what we use on trailers. They are analog, or should I say, they uh, generate their own voltage and are excited by the exciter ring, which gives a waveform. So you can um, check, and I often do, um, is spin the wheel and use an oscilloscope to get a signal, and then I can check to see if the exciter ring is actually warped or not. But on Land Rovers, it's the same, but they're a bit smaller. Nice to use an oscilloscope whenever I can, however it's uh, quite handy just to uh, break out the diagnostic scanner and uh, use this. Okay, so I don't have any issues with that. The, the rear right, which had a problem, is okay. So uh, over 40 miles an hour you can get all sorts of dropouts in it. I did do a road test and check it again. You can um, just put this down and then save it and uh, then look at it later instead of having to look at the screen while you're driving. Right, so the other issue, which is a reported electrical fault. Now, I was curious about this because we had quite a few uh, different uh, DTCs. Uh, some of these were monitorable, okay. Now, I've done that one, and I've done the oil deterioration with oil change. You can see in the videos before this. We did a uh, video a little while ago, which uh, we had some issues, and I was using a snap-on uh, scanner, a better one than what I've got, and it kept coming up with um, all sorts of weird stuff, and it was very inconsistent. Now, I don't look at past experiences and think it's going to be the same thing. However, things stay in the back of my mind. And uh, mainly with the uh, investigations, one has to uh, sort of keep an open mind until you can get to the root of the problem. Now, with this one specifically, it was on a Peugeot partner. It had all sorts of issues, no communication with engine, ECU, etc., etc. Um, I'll put a link to the video down below, but basically um, what it was was a, a loose earth here which was uh, giving issues. Now, with intermittent faults, they can uh, not happen for a while, and then they happen. And when you can catch them, then you can start to investigate. With second-hand information, it's hard. You have to experience the fault yourself. Luckily, it's written down, so this is the next thing to investigate. We've got things like the oil temperature sensor and the uh, coolant temperature sensor. They um, kicked up codes that they weren't working. Now, uh, with a test drive, I didn't have any problems. So scrolling through the engine uh, data, there's two sets here. There's a hell of a lot of information you can pull up. Now, you do not want to run every single one of these PIDs because it, it runs slow. So you just pull up the ones you actually need and then go back into the uh, graphing mode. Okay, um, we had a, an issue with the brake input, which was AB color relation, putting the foot on the brake and off again. And you can see brake input switch, okay, it's active inactive, which means I put my foot on the brake and it, it comes up as active. Okay, so engine coolant and engine um, coolant voltage and temperature, okay, and then I've also put on this somewhere engine oil temperature right okay so after a while of running you can see what's happening um, the temperature is about 73 the engine oil temperature is at something like 123 degrees centigrade I'm not sure if that's actually right but okay we'll accept that it might be what I'm looking for here is um, any type of glitch okay now the engine coolant voltage does make a difference and so does the uh, oil temperature and you can see that this is ECU generated information. I'm, I'm not going through the front door and testing the component. I'm testing the information that the ECU is seeing from the sensors, okay? So I'll let that run for a while and you can see it is uh, the temperature is dropping, not drastically, um, 
it goes up and down because don't forget you've got a thermostat that opens lets a flow um, you'll also when it's just ticking over the temperature will naturally drop anyway uh, oil always uh, cools off slower than what um, coolant does okay so you can see it's it's fairly okay so the vehicle actually uh, behaved itself while it was on the test drive and i left it idling just monitoring it and you can see the four um glitches they're just momentary glitches and that's a split second but there is an issue here because we have a drops out and spikes Okay, so you can see those four lines, they're all consistent exactly at the same time in different places or in one place. Now, this is going to take some investigation. Customers not going to be happy because they do need their vehicle back. Next step or the uh, next part of the strategy is to uh, secure some resources, uh, wiring diagrams and connector information. This is available and uh, I got a, a PDF of the Rave disk off the internet. Okay, this is Defender left hand drive wiring uh, diagrams or wiring legends. Now this will give me the wiring colours and the, the pin designations. And uh, what's important here is the C numbers are also connectors. And uh, I can then use those as references. Go on to the uh, electrical library um, diagrams of where the connectors are and find out where they are. And this will give me an idea how to pin them out. There's, there's a little bit of testing yet to do until we can get to the uh, crux or the uh, root of the problem here. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the connector library here, which also comes with a rave disk, you can see that it's uh, very, very comprehensive. It tells you where um, positions of the connectors are what the pin numbers are, the colours are, and uh, what they do, which is vitally important. So uh, watch on and see how we get on with this, because um, this is quite an interesting fault. Hopefully it will be a simple one. If not, then we're going to be in trouble.